All right. So what they what they give us right now is they that's cosecant. So they say the cosecant of of an angle is square root of 13 over 2, and the secant of an angle is square root of uh, 13 over 3. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go back and kind of review what we've previously talked about when looking at sine, cosine, and tangents. If you guys remember, when we were looking at the unit circle, uh, we had the unit circle, right? And then remember, we would talk about certain type of angles. And remember, when we said like sine of 30 degrees, do you remember, we were trying to figure out, do you guys remember what the sine represented of an angle? If I said sine of theta, what did we say sine of theta represented? How do we evaluate for sine, sine of theta? This was in our previous section. Does anybody remember? Sine of theta represented the what? The y what, though? The y coordinate. Yeah, of the y coordinate, if I was going to say my angle, so if I said sine of 30 degrees, I was going to say, here's 30 degrees. The sine represented that y coordinate of my angle where it crosses the unit circle. right? It was the y coordinate of that point on the unit circle. And the reason being is because we created a right triangle where y was that coordinate. And remember, we always had a radius of 1. Because remember, we also talked about sine is always opposite over um, hypotenuse. right? Sine was the relationship of your opposite over your hypotenuse. But since my hypotenuse is 1, we just said that the sine of an angle, theta, was equal to y, the y coordinate of the point. Then when we evaluate for sine of 30 degrees, so I'm trying to find out, if I say sine of 30 degrees, that means I want to find the y coordinate of the coordinate point that where um, the point on my unit circle is at for the angle of 30 degrees, which hopefully we know is going to be at 1 half. And that was by memory, that's by working with our unit circle, right? If you look at your unit circle, for the 30 degrees, the y coordinate is 1 half. Now we get into a little problem because when we look over here, are we given the angle anymore? No, we're not. So what we need to do is, if you guys can see, if they say cosecant of theta equals square root of 13 over 2, um, what are we given? We're not given the angle anymore, but what are we given? What was yeah, we're given a point, right? We're given an x and a y coordinate. However, are these x and y coordinates, are these on the unit circle that we've talked about? Are these on the unit circle? No, they're not, right? We've talked about the coordinate points that are on the unit circle. We talked about 1 half, square root of 3 over 2, 1, comma 0. Those are the common ones we've talked about. This we've not written down on the unit circle. So I want you guys to write down something. Whenever you're given, you're working with points, all right, that are not on the unit circle, Create yourself a triangle. So first of all, if we have cosecant of theta, does anybody remember what cosecant of theta? Cosecant of theta is the reciprocal of what, Tajay? What did you say? Very good. You got people nice next to you. Very nice. So you could say sine of theta is equal to 1 over the cosecant of theta. Or cosecant of theta is equal to 1 over sine of theta, meaning they're reciprocals of each other. So the cosecant of theta, if I said, uh, since those are reciprocals of each other, if I said the sine is opposite over hypotenuse, then the cosecant is going to be hypotenuse over my opposite. So if I'm going to create a triangle right now, I know that square root of 13 is my opposite, and 2, I'm sorry, square root of 13 is my hypotenuse, and 2 is going to be my opposite. Then I go and look at secant, which is the reciprocal of cosine. And remember, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the reciprocal of adjacent over hypotenuse is hypotenuse over adjacent. So hypotenuse over adjacent, which will be 3. As I'll make that my theta. Okay. So do we know what our angle is? Do we know what our angle is? No. But do we have a triangle now? And remember, ladies and gentlemen, the next thing is, so the first thing you want to write down is whenever you have a point that's not on the unit circle, that means it's going to be difficult for us to be able to figure out those triangles at this point. When you do not have a point on the unit circle, 
draw a triangle. What should you have done for your homework quiz? Draw a triangle, right? Because that wasn't it. That was two thirds. That wasn't a point on your unit circle. So you draw a triangle. You figure out what your adjacent, your opposite, and your hypotenuse is. Now, can we determine what sine, cosine, tangent are with a with this right triangle? Yes, of course we can. Let's like, take a look at it. Sine, opposite over hypotenuse. 2 over square root of 13. Rationalize the denominator. 2 square root of 13 over 13. Cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, which you guys notice is just the reciprocal of these. Rationalize the denominator. Tangent, opposite over adjacent. I only need two things. And then we get into our lovely co-function identities. So our co-function identities, remember the secant, excuse me, of 90 minus theta, that was equal to what? Does anybody remember? To the cosecant. So secant of 90 minus theta is equivalent to cosecant of theta. So we look up there, and what's cosecant of theta? Square root of 13 over 2. Does everybody kind of see how that relates with each other? OK. Do you remember we talked about, um, remember we talked about the sine of 30 degrees was equal to the cosine of 60 degrees? Do you, were you here for that? Uh, no, we, I don't know. Was, I don't think we talked about it on Thursday. But we talked about when you look at a unit circle, you can see that the sine of 30 degrees is equivalent to the cosine of 60 degrees. These are the, the, the y coordinate for sine of 30 is equivalent to the x coordinate of um, 60 degrees. They're exactly the same. So what we figured out was what we could say is the sine of 90 minus an angle theta is equivalent to cosine of that angle theta. So we're saying if you're given an angle theta, all you need to do is take that angle minus by 90, and that's equal to the sine. And you can see that that works. Well, it's the same thing. Secant of 90 minus theta is equivalent to cosecant of theta. And it, they work back and forth. There's, you, know, they, you, can, you can swap out the cosines and the sines. It works both ways. And then the other one was tangent is 90 minus theta cotangent. So those are what we call our co-function identities, which we talked about in class. So I just need to remember how they relate to each other. Okay. Anybody have any general questions on